When Eddie was a teenager, Eric Clapton was his biggest influence. He had Clapton's posters on the wall and copied his solos note for note. His brother Alex had a Ginger Baker one. So when Van Halen got huge success, Eddie met his guitar hero, Eric Clapton, a few times. When they first met, Eddie said, Thank you very much for your music. It was a big influence on me. Then they hung out, drank a few beers, and had a good time. But their good relationship didn't last long. First, Eric Clapton got insulted when Brian May and Eddie Van Halen recorded a blues jam in 1983. They called it Blues Breaker and dedicated it to Eric Clapton. Brian May sent Clapton a copy. They thought he would enjoy and appreciate it, but they were wrong. Clapton took it as an insult. Eric Clapton explained in a 1986 interview with Musician Magazine. And he says, one side was kind of a fusion thing, really very interesting, great to listen to. And the other side was a blues jam. It was so horrible. And they dedicated it to me. They sent me a copy, I put it on, expecting something, and, you know, I was almost insulted that they should send this to me, because they both, they can't play. They took turns to play solos, and it just went head at it, with everything they knew, and there are no dynamics, uh, no buildup, no sensitivity. I was very disappointed. And we have to say that Eric's right. It sounds like a couple of dudes just jamming against each other, you know, in the garage. You would expect much more from musicians like Eddie Van Halen and Brian May. If you dedicated something to Eric Clapton and want him to enjoy your work, you have to record something really special and tasteful. Well, while Brian May's parts sound really well done, feels like Eddie Van Halen didn't put much work, time, and effort into it. He just came out and jammed. And Eddie admitted that he uh, played that blues rock stuff, which he hadn't played for years. Brian May was on the defensive when talking about the jam dedicated to Eric Clapton. And this is what he told Guitar World magazine in 2020. When we started the Blues Breaker track, I think we kind of had Eric Clapton in our minds and the people that Clapton would revere like B.B. King, Muddy Waters. Uh, it was the power of the blues which made us gel. I remember Edward saying, you know, you got me to play today in a way I haven't played for years. Just simple and from the heart, you know, that kind of feeling. <laughs> Um, in the interview with Ultimate Classic Rock in 2020, Brian May says, I think we all got to the point where we worked hard in the studio with our respective bands, and it, uh, it was almost becoming a job. But this was different. We're all friends, and whatever happens here is a bonus. So it was full of joy, and there was no pressure, but boy, there was adrenaline. It was so exhilarating, like setting, you know, setting off down a big ski slope 100 miles an hour. It was an amazing feeling. I looked around and just smiled and smiled and smiled. Well, of course there was no pressure. They just put out a 13-minute blues jam, which took up all of side two and wrote, dedicated to Eric Clapton. Very smart indeed, but for obvious reasons, Eric didn't appreciate it. On the Blues Breaker track with Brian May, Eddie Van Halen said, That was just a get-together jam. May invited me down to, you know, record plant. We played. Uh, after we played, he called me up about four months later and asked if I thought about putting the stuff out. And I said, send me the tape. Let me hear it first because I didn't remember how it went. Uh, he did, and I said, sure, what the hell? It reeks of fun. Uh, so when Eddie uh, heard that Clapton called their joyful jam essentially crap, he got very upset. He wanted to meet Eric. So he met Eric Clapton at a party in New York. Eddie was drunk. He went up to Clapton and said, Hey, I love you, man. When I was a kid, I had your posters on my wall. I copied your solos note for note. So, But Eddie was drunk. 
and he kept complimenting Eric, telling him what a major influence he was on him. However, Clapton didn't appreciate it. He, he was newly sober at the time himself, looked down his nose at Eddie, and basically dismissed him. Later, Ed's comment was, you know, forget that tea bag, and they never met again. So after being dismissed by Clapton, Eddie paid back, stating that he wasn't a big fan of Clapton's music after Cream. He goes, actually, after Cream, I dug back a little bit to the Blues Breaker stuff, but my favorite stuff was when he was in Cream, uh, which was only a couple, three years. It wasn't very long run. Uh, but what I really liked was their lights, live stuff, like Will's Fire and Goodbye. Uh, Cream and stuff like that, because then you could really hear uh, three guys playing in their live element. And so, actually, Eddie wanted to meet Clapton one more time. He went to one of his concerts to see him play live. This is what Eddie told Guitar World magazine back in 1992. To be honest with you, I was expecting something more powerful. If I would have seen Cream, I probably would have been blown away because that's the entire era of Clapton that I really loved. The show was more of a, you know, Doobie Brothers kind of thing. There's like this tambourine and bongo player. Uh, the power wasn't there. I tried to get backstage. Unfortunately, Eric had already left. Uh, but we did get to uh, meet the tambourine player. In another interview, Ed said that he uh, was most inspired by Clapton during the Cream era, uh, when he was into cocaine, heroin, etc. Uh, it's funny, my first guitar teacher told me the same thing. Ed added that later, after rehab treatment, Clapton's music was less inspiring. Uh, he was probably referring to stuff like I Shot the Sheriff and Lay Down Sally. Uh, that's when his music was best. White Room, Sunshine, uh, etc. Funny, in 2021, when Eric Clapton issued a statement in response to UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his order that people will need to show proof of being fully vaccinated against the COVID-19 in order to any, enter any nightclub or any other large crowd venue beginning at the end of September. And th that was Eric Clapton's statement. Following the Prime Minister's uh, announcement, on Monday, the 19th of July, 2021, I feel honor-bound to make an announcement of my own. I wish to say that I will not perform on any stage where there is a discriminated audience presence. Unless there is provision made for all people to attend, I reserve the right to cancel the show. Valerie Bertinelli, Ed's first wife, retweeted Rolling Stone's story about Clapton's stance along with a photo of her, her late ex-husband Eddie Van Halen and Clapton. The image was captioned, Once a dick, always a dick. Well, anyway, Eric Clapton is a great guitar legend, and Eddie always said that Eric influenced him to play the most. Eddie explained to Guitar World in 2010, being limited gear-wise forced me to find my own voice on the guitar. That's why Eric Clapton's live jams with Cream were such an influence on me. Back in 68, he was pretty much just using natural distortion on those live tracks on Wheels of Fire and Goodbye. I had no money and couldn't afford a fuzz box or a wah-wah or a ring modulator or whatever Hendrix had in his whole rig. I just plugged straight into an amp and turned up to 11. So, in order to get a different or unique sound, I had to learn to squeeze it out with the strings with just my fingers. I never had a guitar lesson in my life, except from listening to Eric Clapton records. In an interview with Guitar Tricks Insider Magazine back in 2016, Van Halen listed six albums that were some of his favorites and were essential in his opinion. He placed Cream's albums Wheels of Fire and Cream Goodbye to the second and third places respectively after The Who's Live at Leeds. <laughs>